everyone, welcome back. Okay, now let's talk about fatigue failure. Fatigue failure, that's an important little term here. So, fatigue is a failure under a lengthy period of repeated stress or strain cycling. So it means you put a stress on, you pull it off. You put it on, you pull it off. Put it on, pull it off. Put it on, put it off. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Now, the amazing thing is that this can cause part failure even though the applied stress is less than your maximum stress. Okay, so the max stress that you're getting right here is less than the yield stress. Sorry, I should have said yield stress. So no necking should occur, so it shouldn't begin leading to failure. However, because of fatigue, eventually this is actually responsible for 90% of mechanical engineering failures. Whew. And this right here is just a diagram of how you can test fatigue failure. You put some load on the specimen and then you completely go back and forth stretching it over and over and over again until it fails and you see how many revolutions it was able to take or how many stretches was it able to take before it finally failed. So here is some fatigue data plotted as the stress amplitude versus the number of cycles. Stress amplitude versus the number of cycles. Stress amplitude is simply saying from where you're, you know, normally are, and then it increases and then goes back down again. Increases and goes back down. It's the, that increase. That increase. Okay. So there's two types of fatigue behavior that's observed. One is that there is a fatigue limit. As long as your stress amplitude is low enough, it's not saying that the magnitude of your stresses are too big, but it's the stress, the changes in the stress is low enough, you're safe. Now, if you have little small fluctuations, it doesn't matter. It's not going to cause it to fail. However, if you go above that, eventually, after a certain number of cycles, it will become unsafe and it will fail. So if you're down here, you're safe. That means small changes, small amplitudes. It's not saying where it was. It might be of huge stress, but just it's, rot it's changing in small amounts. Or it can be a small stress and it's changing in small amounts. I don't know this is fine, but if you have a huge stress and you have big changes, it's going to fail. Or if you have small stress and you have big changes, it can fail. However, for some materials, there is no fatigue limit. No fatigue limit at all. Um, so it doesn't matter what you do. Um, this is like aluminum here. Eventually, it's going to fail. After a certain number of cycles, now, it might be a oh, massive number of cycles because you're thinking like, well, I have an aluminum swing set and I swung on that a lot of times. Well, well, yes, you did. Yes, you did. And eventually that aluminum swing set would fail when you swung on it normally. However, this is 10 to the nice cycles. Okay, that is you swinging on it a billion times. And I don't know about you. I loved swinging as a kid, but I doubt I got above a few thousand. Maybe a few thousand, but still, that's way down here. It's very unlikely to fail. And so considering your weight compared to the strength of aluminum, I think you're way down here. It's going to take a lot of cycles. So maybe in a few million years of you swinging, it would eventually fail. But in a few million years, perhaps, you know, we'll have other bigger issues. So the fatigue life is the total number of stress cycles until it finally causes fatigue failure at a particular stress amplitude. That's the change there. That's the change. A particular change up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. A certain number of stress cycles will lead to failure. So how can we improve fatigue life? Well, one, reduce the magnitude of the mean stress. Okay? Reduce the magnitude of the mean stress. So we have our stress amplitude here. We have the number of cycles to failure. If we decrease our mean stress, it's going to increase our fatigue life. Decrease our mean stress, increase our fatigue life. So, as we get further and further away, well, things get better and better. And I did reverse the arrow, sorry. Increasing, there you go. If I go this direction, we have more cycles to failure. My bad. So 
as we decrease our mean stress, it gets better and better. Okay, the second one is surface treatments. Because if you have compressive surface stresses, it makes the surface harder and it suppresses surface cracks from growing. One way is it's called shot painting. You literally shoot the surface with a bunch of little particles and it causes lots of plastic deformation on the surface. You know, small plastic deformation, you can't really see it. And that makes it harder, which makes it harder for those cracks to grow. Or you can carburize it. You put in a carbon rich gas, the carbon molecules get into the surface, they don't get into the body, and that causes that surface to be harder. And it improves, um, and helps it resist cracks and cuts from forming. The third one is from design changes. You get rid of stress concentrators, things are likely to last longer. That's bad. This is good. We want those nice curves. We do not want these sharp edges. The sharp edges are not going to help us. So by doing all of those things, we can help it. We can help it to improve its um, fatigue life. So that's it for this time. Thank you for listening. Just remember, um, for some metals, it doesn't matter what you do, eventually it's going to fail. Now, it might be forever compared to you know your lifetime or the lifetime of the part, but still, given enough loadings, it will eventually fail. And you have to make sure that you're planning around that so that it doesn't fail before you're ready for it. So thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye-bye.